perkuliahan, tapi tenang, perkuliahan gak hanya di kelas kok. Saya mahasiswa agribisnis dan ini perkuliahan di luar kelas. Di program studi agroteknologi, nggak kalah seru loh. Tidak hanya itu, di program studi ilmu dan teknologi pangan juga punya kegiatan yang menarik kok. Inilah kegiatan dari program studi kehutanan. Ayo sama-sama kita lestarikan hutan. Sekarang giliran kegiatan dari program studi perikanan. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the second greeting and opening is from Dean Faculty of Agriculture and Animal Science, Associate Professor Dr. De David Hermawan, time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to lecture exchange program, relationship between University of Muhammadiyah Malang and University of Kasesat, Thailand. And thank you very much for Miss Dr. Nep Nep Nafis to attending to attend in this program. And I hope this program will be conducted very success. And I'm also appreciate to Mr. Associate Professor Dr. Ali Ihwan who has initiate, initiated this program and I hope this program can can uh, can give us some benefits and can be followed with another collaboration with between our uh, my university and Kasesat University in Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this uh, program, this event, beside in a uh, lecture exchange program, I hope also can be uh, can be increased with a higher level. For example, for collaboration in uh, research collaboration and acting of students. Miss Nevis, how are you? I have ever met you while two, two years ago when I, when I, visit, I visited to your campus while my student conference to internship in your campus. Uh, Indonesian, I think, yeah, this program is very important for our country and 
also for your country because Indonesia and Thailand having a good agriculture I think similar climate and similar in the production of agriculture for, uh, because the reason uh, because uh, we have a similar uh, in some condition I hope our university will will get uh, will get increase a high, to a high level in any programs as uh, uh, for example as as I, I said uh, before and thank you very much for your attention also in um, maybe a script, uh, from Indonesia and Thailand students and I hope our collaboration between student acting will be uh, conducted between University of Muhammadiyah and student of uh, University of Kasasat in Thailand. Finally, so with uh, this, uh, would you like to say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim? I open this program and I hope this event gets success and be continued. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I open this event and good luck for everyone, for everybody, ladies and gentlemen, as, as I stand in this event. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the greeting. Ladies and gentlemen, the next agenda, uh, the main agenda which are we, we are waiting for, uh, the first guest lecture, explanation from Kasesat University, Thailand about post-harvest disease control. Before we start, let me read her curriculum vitae. Let me introduce about Dr. Net Napis Kwekhom. Her currently position is an assistant professor in plant pathology department, Faculty of Agriculture, Kasesat University, Thailand. Then the research and education major is post-harvest disease and plant protection. Her education from Doctor Degree of Natural Science, Faculty of Life Science, University of Venia, Austria. Her thesis about bioassay based phytochemistry of select tropical plant to discover natural pesticide. And she is active writer in international publication. Uh, she has much international publication. I think enough. Well, now to Dr. Netnapis Kwekom, time is yours. Good morning, everyone. Sawadika. It is my a great pleasure today to give a lecture in the lecture exchange program between um, the University of Mahamadiyat Malang and Kasesat University uh, in the potential for developing sustainable plant disease control methods and their comparisons between Thailand and Indonesia. So um, this is program, it's a uh, Co cooperation between uh, Professor Henik Sukorini and me. May I introduce myself? My name is Nenapit Kiyokam, Head of Department of Pan Pathology, Faculty of Agriculture, Kasesai University, Thailand. So let me share the screen. So and then we can uh, start our lecture today. And the topic of our lecture today, it's about physical treatments to control post harvest diseases of fresh fruits and vegetable. So uh, there are many causes of post harvest loss divided into factor. It is, uh, they are environmental factor and internal factor. For the environmental factor, it's composed of temperature, 
physical damage and we will focus on uh, pathogens in, uh, in this lecture today. And there are also relative humidity, atmospheric composition, light, gravity, rodents, and other animals, contamination. And for the internal factor, it's uh, about uh, the host plant, for example, respiration hormone, uh, composition change, morphological change, physiological disorder, and also the period of senescence. So this is the picture that I would like to show you uh, the pro Im improper uh, post harvest uh, management. You can see uh, on the left-hand side, you can see the transportation of durian uh, to transport uh, durian in this way. So this spine may uh, injure the other fruit of durian. So it can cause damage or wound. And of course, it will later uh, have infection. So, and also on the right-hand side, uh, this is how they uh, pack vegetable in the market, in the fresh market. You can see it's it's not uh, it's not good for the commodity because the vegetable still have a respiration. So if the uh, the bag it's it's not good for uh, release uh, the water because of a uh, vegetable respiration or could not uh, release the heat. So the heat is accumulated in the packet. Therefore, it can cause damage. It can cause physiological change afterward. And later, it may cause the post harvest loss of, uh, of the vegetable. And this is also the other example of banana. And you can see this is the banana uh, variety in Thailand, the short one. And the way that they convey uh, the banana fruit from the garden to market. So they pack it uh, very dense in the truck or in pickup. And then later on when they uh, put on the shelf, so it may have a very short lifetime when they sell in the shelf. And also you can see uh, this picture showed uh, the injury because of the tape that they wrap the fruit, banana fruit in a portion. So it's too tight. Therefore, it can uh, have a scar on uh, uh, the browning on the skin of banana. And also uh, when the uh, shrink wrap uh, papaya and it, uh, papaya fruit, it may can cause uh, uh, the condition which uh, induce for uh, infection. For example, uh, in uh, Papaya from uh, China. This I have seen on China in the supermarket. So it it may happen from many reasons. But uh, when infection happen, the physiological and biological biochemical of the plant has been changed. For example, the fruit respiration and uh, ethylene evolution may be increased and that area of infection it it will be the source of ethylene and what does it mean it's mean um, uh, ethylene it will be uh, stimulate uh, fruit to get to to get into a ripening stage and also uh, pectolytic activity and its source in the infected tissue.
and stimulation of fruit softening and change the pectin compound content from uh, insoluble to be soluble and change the bioconsistent of infection tissue. An effect of pathogen on plant physiological function, it can cause a, a photosynthesis problem and translocation of water and nutrition in host plant and host respiration permeability on cell membrane. Transcription and translation, it's about DNA or RNA and effect on plant growth and reproduction. It can happen on a field and, and also after harvest in the state of post harvest. And about post harvest decay organism, there are two ways that can penetrate to the fruit. The first one is through the womb. So uh, it may uh, go through the stem end that we, when we harvest, so we cut it from the mother tree and um, so the wound can occur before harvest as well, like uh, insect injury or wind damage and so on. Or maybe it's happened during handling, transport or packing. So we have to minimize the fruit injury to protect them. And then the second one, some pathogen can penetrate of intact fruit through the intact surface of the mature fruit or stay in quincent infection uh, or latent infection until fruit is mature. And maybe they are colonized since uh, they are fouling and invasion of the maturing fruit. And so this is the how the pathogen attached to the host it can go to the direct penetration, to the natural openings, and also to the natural wound. And this is the this is cycle that I would like to show you. Uh, this is anthracnose disease, which is have a, a wide host range, and they have many hosts to uh, infect. And I I think they 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 there is um uh stay in the plant like a latent infection it will uh, uh, show the symptom and occurring the symptom when the fruit uh, get ripened and this is the another disease cycle of botrytis botrytis gray mold disease it's also well known in many crop and this one also Monilinear fructicola, which we will see it uh, quite often in the stone fruit. And this is uh, the example of Pestalotriopsis and Collectotrichum gliospharioides, which we found in the uh, petal of uh, mangosteen. So uh, we isolate and um, make a um, make a pure culture from the fruit, which is we found it infected since it's uh, a fruiting and fouling. So you can see, we can see uh, under the petal, we have seen uh, the fruiting body and also spore mass. And also when the fruit have a hardening fruit, sometimes when we open, when we cut, close cut fruit, uh, the hardening fruit, then we can see uh, the fungus in uh, the, fun the mycelium inside. So, and uh, this is the colony which were isolated from the zipper of young fruit, which is not uh, show any symptom. And this is the spore of them. So, today, I would like to talk about Pursawa's disease control, but it's only uh, in the topic of physical means control. For example, uh, using cold storage, heat treatments, ionizing radiation, and ultraviolet illumination. 
And for other topic, uh, Professor Hennig will uh, give you a detail later. So means means for maintaining host resistance. So the first one, cold storage. Cold storage can maintain the host resistance. Uh, to prolong shelf life, to decrease the metabolism of the fruit, and the fruit uh, will um, uh, delay of ripening, and also modify and control atmosphere. Uh, what does it mean? To, uh, to decrease, to reduce the, uh, the oxygen in the air, in the air. Uh, surrounding in environmental surrounding of the fruit so we call atmosphere and uh, to reduce oxygen and uh, to increase to add uh, carbon dioxide or sometimes we, we don't add it but uh, the the fruit or vegetable they are they have their respiration therefore the carbon dioxide it's accumulate in the packaging so we can uh, use it as the modified atmosphere packaging, which is quite uh, popular now, nowadays to uh, control post disease and also to, to use as a post technology. And also uh, we can use the hypobiotic pressure and growth regulators or calcium application. All of them are maintaining the host resistance. And also we can combine like integrated control. So we can combine a physical control, biological control or chemical control. Like we can use a cold chain and then a water heat treatment or waxing and then put it in cold chain or cold storage. And then or, may, or maybe we can use uh, uh, hot water treatment and then use it use the antagonistic treatment or we can use gamma radiation packet uh, and then pack use film of wax and then uh, store in the cold story or um, maybe we can uh, control atmosphere or modify atmosphere as well so for the principles of plant disease management so we have a preventive, preventative, sorry, and curative. So in the post harvest treatment, so we uh, we always prevent use preventative like avoidance of pathogen by a cultural practice uh, uh, to increase host resistance or use the resistant variety of the host, or excretion, quarantine, or sorting, or grating, or eradication, elimination, reduced inoculum, or sanitation, which I will tell you later. And also, also uh, to protect or prevent chem by using chemical, biological, or physical treatment. So, um, so we we are uh, in in post harvest. We are not that using the uh, curative method like therapy, because if the uh, the symptom or the wound uh, occur, so the fruit will be eliminated or uh, salting. And this is the way of the uh, cultural practice in Thailand. So this is the variety of mango nam dok mai si thong. It's a, a very clear skin. So to have the good quality of mango, so the farmer use the uh, a paper bag inside. They cover with a carbon carbon, and uh, this is the uh, water resistant bag. And then at the at the end of the bag, they will seal it tight to prevent the water uh, come from the stem to the stem end of the fruit 
Why? Because if the water it's it's uh it's come down to the fruit, they will uh, carry the spore spore suspension, and then it may cause anthracnose, anthracnose or stem a lot later. And this is the one uh, example of a uh, um, a practical a uh, cultural pra cultural practice, and also the strategies of post harvest decay protection suppression and eradication so we can uh alternating the micro environment by ph enzyme function nutrient availability availability or using fungicide which is direct toxicity to the pathogen or use the biological control or maybe we can alternate the host physiology, like to use a, a plant growth regulator, like a gibberellin, 2,4-D, ethylene, um, ethylene uh, inhibitor, for example. And we can also uh, uh, treat with indirect effect on the pathogen, like change pH, surrounding use alkali, uh, sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, or uh, accumulate of acid in the infected site also. And um, we can also prevent by sanitation. So normally in the packing house, they will start uh, with um, a cutting in proportion or maybe they will load in the sanitation watching using oxidized materials like chlorine, ozone, or peroxide. But uh, very uh, chlorine is most popular to use. And um, so this infection of non-injured commodity surface and of microorganism in water, it's 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 okay. But if the microorganism is uh, infect through the stem puncture or to the uh, the injury area of to the uh, brush, the the uh, the sanitation watching, it's not enough. So this is the example of the banana that uh, they are export to um, Japan. So, uh, when the banana transferred to the packing house, so they cut it in the finger, in the hands, and then uh, clean it in uh, a cool water, added with uh, chlorine, and uh, use the spongy to uh, clean the dust or something else, and then also to decrease the load of inoculum. And then uh, they will use the the air uh, air gun to eliminate some insect which is hiding in some area of, of the a finger of banana and then uh, waiting and and uh, when they pack in the box already uh, they will suck the air by a vacuum cleaner you see here so why they suck the air out so to give the uh, atmosphere inside the bag like a modified atmosphere. So inside inside the bag, it will uh, contain a low concentration of oxygen. And after a banana have a respiration, so inside it will accumulate of carbon dioxide, which that condition will maintain a uh, prolonged shelf life to delay the ripening of the banana fruit. And also, it will suppress of uh, the microorganism to grow because uh, lack of the oxygen. And this is a picture I took from Israel Apple Packing House. So after a uh, harvest, apple and convey to the packing house so they put it in the water in cold water and cleaning by a uh, collination and then uh, convey by um, the water to prevent them uh, about mechanical injury so but 
Um, however, so uh, we can uh, notice some of the fruit have injured or infect. So uh, it may, the, may be the source of inoculum later. Then the water of cleaning should add some uh, disinfectant like uh, chlorine or ozone. And this is um, uh, citrus fruit also. They also um, use uh, the method to cleaning and also they will uh, use the, the treatment, physical treatment in hot water. So I, I, would, I will tell you later. And this is um, potato. Potato is different. We cannot wash them. So the, the way that they, they uh, try to clean it, it's uh, put it in the sieve and then uh, let the dust uh, come drop down. And also after finish, so the line, the line of packing house will clean with a coordination. And also the salting is very important to prevent uh, the contamination of the fruit, to prevent, uh, to, to salting the, um, uh, the, it's, uh, the defect or some infect, infected fruit And uh, the effective of uh, chlorination, so we have to concern about the pH of water because they will work uh, effective at uh, pH about 6 to 7.5. And uh, if the water has some organic matter, so it may reduce the activity and contact time. So longer time is necessary to lower the concentration and temperature a less effect uh, on the activity than other parameter. And sanitation wash can use um, chlorine, chlorine oxide, ozone, acidify, like hydrogen peroxide, and also post harvest fungicide in the water. And then uh, it can be liquid, but ozone can be a uh, gas also. And uh, so the activity may, may happen on the fruit surface and some like acidify can uh, have activity on the wound as well. So uh, there are some a chemical like a generally recognized as safe, but I, I will speak uh, of this a little bit. So it it's accepted by FAO that uh, this kind of a chemical which normally in a food grade is safe to use in post harvest uh, control, disease control. So uh, go back to physical control. Uh, we'll, the first one will be, uh, I will talk about uh, cold storage. So cold storage, so we use the low temperature because it affects both to the host and also pathogen. Uh, Simu, uh, simultaneously, they prevent moisture loss because when we put it in a uh, low temperature, the activity or metabolism of a uh, uh, commodity is slowed down. And this is the uh, indirectly by inhibit inhibition of ripening or senescence of, of the host plant. So uh, it can prolong shelf life and maintain the resistance to disease. And indirectly by inhibit the pathogen development and uh, suppress the growth because it's unfavorable uh, temperature for pathogen growth. And also we can use heat treatment. Heat treatment treatment by using hot water, vapor treatment or hot air, or we, we can use also uh, infrared ray or microwave ray because it generates uh, the heat as well. And also we can use uh, uh, radiation, ionizing radiation, like uh, gamma radiation or UVC. So this is the experiment that they work about 
uh, survival of spore in uh, monilinear botrytis, cardiosporium, uh, rhizopus, and penicillium. So you see, uh, only uh, temperature, it's about uh, nearly 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. So the percentage of germination is decreased. And the heat treatment, it has a many uh, function to work when we treat on the fruit, like they can uh, induce some heat shock protein and also some enzyme or some uh, um, antioxidant system activity. And also they, uh, they can uh, in, induce alginase activity and so on. And also uh, some uh, protein or enzyme or gene of the plant. And this is the example of a uh, hot water treatment of a mango fruit. So it's quite uh, normal in Thailand that they use this method uh, in post harvest treatment, they use uh, about 50 to 55 degrees Celsius to soak the fruit. And if it's a high temperature, they use it short time, but it's low temperature for, for, for longer time. And it's proof that it can uh, control anthracnose disease and, can, and it uh, can also uh, uh, retard of the ripening, mango, ripe, mango fruit ripening. And also uh, we have the regulation when uh, we would like to import, I'm sorry, export uh, a mango fruit to Japan. So it's required, they require uh, the treatment of hot water treatment at 46 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes to uh, to eradicate uh, insect pest. And this is the um, research that they study about effects of hot water treatment on anthracnose disease in banana fruit and its possible mechanism. Um, and this study show that uh, you see, in the control on the fruit, on the surface of the fruit of papaya, there are many uh, diseases that in the air, in the arrow, it's a uh, wax, wax. So the structure, structural change of EP cuticle wax induced by hot water treatment here in the lower picture, you see the wax is melting and then cover the surface of the fruit and somehow it's a protect also. And at the stomata, the wax is melting and then close the stomata. So to close it, uh, close the uh, natural opening. So it's, so when, when um, the spore um, try to invasion or infect, so, uh, they don't have uh, the, the opening area to intact the plant. Or maybe uh, when the wax is melt, so it's difficult to, to uh, make an infection. This is the hot water treatment by a vapor that they, in Israel, they treat uh, the citrus fruit and may, they may add some wax and, and after uh, treated, the fruit should be dry immediately. Otherwise, if they get uh, um, wet, so later the spore of the microorganism can uh, germinate later. So uh, it's, it will be dry after treatment. And this is uh, uh, the method of heat treatment can prevent uh, the infection of uh, a green mole, Penicillium digitatum. That's very good uh, method.
but we have to concern about the temperature and the time. And this is uh, the control post harvest disease by ionizing radiation using cobalt 60, a gram array. Yeah, we can put the mango in the box and then the gamma radiation can uh, go through the packet. And you can see for the treatment, uh, it's still green and uh, less of uh, infect fruit compared with the control. And the gamma ray, it's a very high frequency of the uh, radiation, as you can see here. And there are some uh, experiments which show um, the radiation dose which affect on the germination, on the spot germination of uh, 17 uh, pathogen. It will uh, inhibit a spot germination by uh, gamma radiation. And this is another kind, this is my uh, um, research about infrared ray hot drying and tempering of patty rice so we normally we uh, dry dry the patty under the sun dry but uh, we can apply this technology using infrared ray which is make a short a short time uh, to decrease the uh, moisture content of the patty which can uh, uh, keep the quality of the patty from the uh, uh, storage mold. And also um, this way they use a UV by uh, sun drying to dry the coffee bean before I keep in the uh, bag and, and put it uh, in, the, uh, in the storage house. And uh, we study on the contaminated fungi of post harvest robusta coffee bean and study on effect of UVC radiation on storage fungi. So we found uh, the infection of Aspergillus niger, Aspergillus fawas, and penicillium. And we found that um, uh, apply UVC for uh, 10 to uh, 180 minutes can reduce uh, the contamination of Aspergillus farwas and penicillium, but not uh, Aspergillus niger cannot control. And this is the, the picture of uh, Aspergillus farwas, Aspergillus niger, Aspergillus tourist and penicillium, which we found in uh, a coffee. Oh, I'm sorry, in the rice. And this is uh, another uh, experiment. We study on ozone treatment on mycelium inhibition of fungi, four fungi. So we found a rhizopus, Lassioriprodia, Fusalium, and Collectotrichum uh, can uh, reduce after treat with uh, ozone. So they reduce the mycelium growth and also the uh, inhibit the spot germination in the first day. And for a modified atmosphere and controlled atmosphere, so we will, uh, this method that kind of adjust the air, elevation of carbon dioxide and a reduction of oxygen, or both. So CA, it's a control. Um, the level of oxygen and carbon dioxide in exactly amount in the closed control or closed, uh, closed room or con uh, closed container. But for MA storage, it's a, a broader and may indicate any synthetic atmosphere arising internationally or unintentionally, I'm sorry, un unintentionally which means that uh, we can, for example, when uh, they put uh, fruit on the bag and then make a hole and close uh, the bag. So inside the bag, 
uh, carbon dioxide will be uh, increased and oxygen will be uh, reduced, but there are some uh, exchange of air by the hole on the plastic bag and then later they uh, they go to the air go to uh, equilibrium so this one is a kind of uh, modified atmosphere storage we found it quite often in a market or supermarket and uh, in this condition will be suppressed of growth due to effects of electron transport on the trichome system and oxidative m size system present in cell may be also suppressed and retard the ripening or senescence of the uh, produce and also depressing the growth of pathogen. And this is uh, the graph show the germination of uh, many fungi which in condition of a low oxygen and high carbon dioxide. So that state, low oxygen and high carbon dioxide will be inhibit the germination of the of of um, many uh, pathogen, and this is the example of modified atmosphere packaging, or we call it MAP. So it's a sealing the commodity in the plastic film or polymeric film like a PVC, but they have a permeability, a kind of exchange gas in the film. So in the film, they are have they, they are a, um, a, a tiny hole to exchange gas and also the humidity. Um, this film is very good. It's uh, from it produced from Japan and it's good for strawberry. So you can see there are no uh, water condensed and it's very cle clear. And this is uh, individual packaging uh, using shrink, wrap film, and so on. So this one is also can uh, prevent the fruit from other infection. And uh, a strawberry packaging in a plastic box, it's, it's not that uh, proper because you can see a lot of uh, condensed water by the respiration of strawberry a later on when it's high humid in the box so it can cause uh, infection by fungi but they are good that they uh, use a bubble plastic sheet to protect uh, me mechanical damage of the fruit and this is the way also to uh, adjust the air inside a packet like a, a vacuum we use it uh, for the brown rice in many places and also uh, we can use for some vegetable we can use it like this but some cannot because they need also uh, oxygen in some commodity it depends and I hope you understand and you will get some idea about uh, uh, physical control treatment for a uh, post heart disease and i hope you enjoy and uh if you have any any questions uh please don't hesitate to to ask me at the end of this lecture and uh professor Heinick will uh, give a lecture next thank you very much Okay, Kop Hun Kap Achan, very interesting. Uh, thank you for explanation. We hope the explanation give advantage for our students. The next agenda, the explanation from the second guest lecture about case study of disease control in field. Before we start, let me introduce her curriculum vitae. Uh, let me introduce about Ms. Henny Sukorini, PhD. Her current position is an associate professor in agrotechnology department and deputy of study affair faculty of agriculture and animal science university of Muhammadiyah malang then the research 
and education major is post harvest disease and plant protection her education from phd program in kasesat university thailand and she also an active writer in international publication she has much international publication i think it's enough well now uh, to miss henny sukorini phd time is yours okay thank you good morning everyone Swadiha. I hope we are in healthy so we can follow or we can attend our lecture exchange program between Kasesat University and Muhammadah University of Malang. In this morning, I would like to present my presentation in the post harvest disease control, in the chemical control, in, in the biological control. We know that even though the product harvest already, but the product still fresh. So the product can still alive, the product can breathe, can release uh, heat, then can lose moisture, can get sick by uh, fungus or bacteria and then can even die. The product have photosynthesis, but this process is not stopped. After harvest, the product still have respiration. In the respiration part, the carbohydrate break to the carbon dioxide and water. In this process, the product release carbon dioxide lost to the air, and then water as a transpiration, and also energy as a heat. So that's why we have uh, more than 20 to 100% loss in the after harvest to the consumer. For example, for trans in the transportation, we also have loss from the field to the farmer home or to the packing house. And this process can still have until the process in the market. So based on Ekern 2006 and Hegak 2010, the loss because of the all process around 20% to 100%. Uh, we know that uh, in the fruit and vegetable have two depart or, or have have two uh, different parts means climat climacteric fruits and non climacteric fruits. The difference of those is a uh, rate of respiration and produce of ethylene. In the climacteric part or in the climacteric fruit. Even though harvest already, the product uh, also still have a high respiration. So this, this kind of product usually easy to get lost. Then the characteristic of uh, perishable commodities, for example, uh, fruits and vegetable, compared to grain. So because uh, the peri why the perishable, why the fruit and fruit and vegetable. Uh, say in perishable commodities because they uh, are easy to get uh, loss and easy to attack by uh, pathogen, fungus or bacteria because of us almost the vegetable and uh, fruit already have a higher water content especially for 70 to 19 percent. But in the grain, uh, only have 10 to 20 percent. And the uh, vegetable and also fruit have higher respiration compared to uh, grain. So estimated the loss of uh, this product uh, Usually, 
in the developed country, 5 to 25 percent, but for developing country, 20 to 50 percent. Uh, this, this loss can be 100 percent if we, not, uh, we cannot handle the product uh, in, the, uh, in the good way. The, uh, the other loss, the other loss is because of energy and labor loss during in the packing house operation, loss of material in the packaging process, cost of waste disposal, loss of food value, especially for nutrient, loss of organic quality, especially for color change, water loss, carbohydrate change, volatile change, breakdown of protein, cell wall component, and softening. But we know that in the, uh, from where the, the pathogen come, can be from uh, pre first or in the process of uh, producing vegetable and also uh, fruit. That why, uh, in the production in the field, also uh, treat by uh, chemical or, or uh, biological or physical or cultural technique to reduce the pathogen attack. Okay, we move to chemical control. I would like to uh, present in the pre-harvest chemical treatment, in the sanitation, in the post-harvest chemical treatment, and the end of the chemical control, I, I would like to present in the natural chemical compound. This is a mango because of uh, anthracnose disease. Anthracnose disease. In the anthracnose disease, we know that the pathogen attack the, the fruit come from the field. Usually we call uh, latent disease. In the, in the field, the spore or conidia of this uh, anthracnose spread to the flower or blossom spread to the leaf, then after this, uh, the spore or conidia uh, germinate, then attach in the, in, the, in, the, in the flower or also in the, and attach to the leaf. But this, this conidia cannot attack, cannot attack the fruits or mango fruits because of the skin of fruit still hard. This pathogen can attack the fruit after the fruit senescence or uh, mature. So that's why we call latent infection. Because of this fact, usually farmers spray the mango tree from the field to the post surface. In this table, I, I would like to show you uh, the pre-harvest treatment in the uh, raspberry fruit. Please, please pay attention in the first column, this is the treatment. The second one is uh, treat by fungicide, named the elevate and switch, and the last column this is the treatment in the, the storage in the room temperature and in the cool storage. Room temperature is around 23 degrees Celsius. So in the first, first column, in the application only in the bloom by elevated 50 WG at 1.68 kilogram on 22 in the early bloom and the second spray in the 50% uh, bloom and, the, and then switch 
62.5 WG at 980 gram on for June in the late bloom. So have three time of uh, spraying. And then uh, keep in the room temperature. So in the last six, eight day, the fruit rot around 30.2%, quite high. But if we put in the cold storage, the root fraud is zero percent. Similar like in the the last in the full session, all spray in bloom and pre first treatment. So have one or two treatment, and then the fruit put in the room temperature, and only got 9.5 percent of fruit rot, and in the cold storage only have zero fruit rot. The meaning of this, uh, pre-harvest treatment is important to reduce uh, fruit rot in the, fruit, uh, in the raspberry fruit by botrytis. This is the second example for apple in the Brazil. Uh, Treat, treat with serenade. This why uh, treat with serenade because uh, almost apple attacked by botrytis cinerea and uh, cryptosporiopsis perennans. So after fruit harvest, place in the humid condition and at 22 degrees Celsius and keep for 15 days. We saw the result that Serenade gave a good control of both disease 15 days after harvesting on fruit treated in pre-harvest. Okay, uh, we move to treatment in the post-harvest. Well, the aim of this application is to reduce and delay the action of internal factor that are responsible for product deterioration and avoid the negative effect of external factor. So the, we have the good quality of our product. And this is uh, the example of some treatment and some uh, product and also the kind of uh, pathogen. The first column is the name of crop. The second column is treatment by uh, fungicide, for example, uh, Taibandacil, Imazalil. And then the, the last column is for a kind of pathogen or, kind, uh, or name of, path, name of uh, disease. And then uh, in the table, you can read by yourself because we have limited time. Uh, I want to I want to explain you that even though the fungicide can reduce the disease incident and also disease severity of product, but we also aware about the residue level and performance of fungicide. Uh, this is the example of residue level of fungicide when combined with uh, hot water. In the peach, in the plum, and in the nectarine that treat with uh, DCNA or 2.6 dichloroanilline at the 41.5 degrees Celsius is effective to control the post-harvest decay that then treatment with hot water alone or fungicide alone and the ambient temperature of 24 degrees Celsius for 1.5 minutes. But we also aware about the residue of this treatment. And the second one is an example using the another fungicide using sodium 
zero vinyl finite. It is the has long been used in the control decay in the citrus fruit. So in the as using SOPP at the 1,000 milligram per liter in the active ingredient and the, in the 40 degrees Celsius, this uh, fungicide residue in the pineapple and the Valencia orange increase with fungicide concentration and length of treatment, but remarkably decrease from 45, uh, sorry, 6.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram when the pH is increased. So when the pH of the SOPP solution was 10.5 and the temperature was rise from 43.3 to 46.9 degrees Celsius, the residue increased from 6.5 to 13.5 milligram per kilogram. And the third Example is uh, when we are using imazolil or tiabendazole. This is the two kind of fungicide are synthetic fungicide employed on the commercial scale to control a wide range of fungal disease on fruit, vegetable, and also for uh, ornamental. The imazolil or IMZ residue is in the citrate fruit are affected by treatment mode for example, if we use a spray or dip the fruit in the fungicide, and the method of application when we mix the water and also wax. In the contrary, the tiabendazole were not affected by deep length, but they increase when fungicide rate and also treatment temperature increase. This is the, this tabel show you that the comparison between post-harvest sanitation and also fungicide treatment. In the treatment chlorine, in the first column, and uh, the delivery is uh, water, the source is gas or can be liquid, the activity a fruit surface or in the solution. The advantage of this treatment is a uh, inexpensive, effective, at low rates. But this emphasis of this treatment is a sensitive to pH and organic load, corrosive, reactive, and disposal issue. Also the chlorine uh, dioxide, the delivery system is water, the source is on-site generation, Activity is for fruit surface or in the solution. The advantage is less sensitive to organic load, and the disadvantage is initial cost of equipment, corrosive, and need training for worker. If we use ozone, and the delivery system is water, even though in the low solubility in the water, the ozone, the source uh, on site generation. The activity is in the solution, but poor solubility, uh, air anti sporulation. The advantage of using ozone is a non chlorine based or no disposal issue. But this disadvantage is poor water solubility, uh, initial cost of equipment, corrosive and need training for the worker. The fourth is uh, using the acidified hydrogen peroxide, peroxide. Delivery system is water. Source is liquid. The activity is a fruit surface or in the solution in the sum one activity. The advantage is less sensitive to the organic load and pH, no disposal issue, and the disadvantage is a uh, limit concentration, cost, high cost, some sensitivity to the pH and organic load. And the last is uh, using a surface fungicide. Delivery system is water, can be used dry or liquid formulation. 
The activity is for wound protection. The advantage is highly effective, and the disadvantage is residue of this fungicide, safety concern, export tolerance, because some country ban to use uh, fungicide. So we should consider about this. Uh, this is the, some controversy on the use of fungicide as post harvest treatment to the fruit crop. In the many countries, fungicide commonly applied before harvest in the field to prevent post harvest fruit decays. Applications are done as late as one day before harvest. But in the contrary, post harvest use fungicide also to food crop. It's not widely accepted in the all country. So we should consider about we use the same or similar fungicide may be used pre and post harvest. And also we consider about residue level. We also consider about post harvest application. Generally more effective because they are more targeted. So specific targeted. Uh, this is how to prevent a fungicide resistant in the post harvest environment. We, before we talk about this, we also have a classes of post harvest fungicide. And the compound of this each fungicide class have a, one a similar chemical structure. The second is a, have a similar mode of action that target either a single site or multiple uh, sites in the biochemical pathway of the fungus. And also we have, we have a class of post harvest fungicide in the cross resistant may be occur among the compound within the same chemical class. And also we'll have also class are identified as a fungicide resistant action committee. We should consider for this, about this class. So towards safer post harvest decay control material, we, we must reduce requirement of older pesticide. We should check and recheck the fungicide still register or not. And then the second, we reduce this pesticide uh, because we have, we can check in the EPA classification on in the EPA web to check the uh, register danger or still can use some uh, fungicide because of uh, safe for human and environment. And then the third uh, pesticide that broader the adoption of IPM practice or reduce because of exposure risk to human, because potential toxicity to the non-target organism, and then because of contamination of the environment. So it's better if we use a specific fungicide to reduce the pathogen. And the better one is use biopesticide, that pesticide de derived from natural materials such as animals, plant, bacteria, fungi, and certain uh, mineral. This is the spectrum of activity of register and new post harvest fungicide on selected agriculture crop in the US, but also can use in the in the world, all the all the world. The the yellow the yellow one is a fungicide is already registered by Japan. We know that the Japan is high standard for using fungicide. So if Japan allow us to use fungicide. Uh, actually, we can use fungicide safely for other country. Uh, this is uh, how to apply post-harvest fungicide treatment to our product. We can use uh, by drench, uh, we can use high volume or low volume uh, sprayer. And uh, the less common one is used by dipping Flutter, foamers, brush, uh, fumigator, duster, paper wrap, or box liner. And in this picture, I would like to show you how to use 
post-harvest fungicide treatment in the high volume spray application and this in the low volume spray application and this is for deep application so deep the, the product in the fungicide uh, fungicide treatment or fungicide mix with water and then this is a uh, in the flutter application. This is for flutter application as well. Then this is uh, use fucking methods to fuck uh, the room, especially that the produce inside. And this is uh, some Pesticide or some uh, product can also use as post-harvest treatment. For example, we use wax. The type of wax is uh, mineral oil, uh, polyethylene, vegetable oil, carnauba, selac on wood resin blend. The second column is the characteristic divided into three parts. The prevention of water loss, prevention of gas exchange, then sign of fruit to make fruit shiny, and the third column is used on specific crop. The first is citrus, uh, the second is nectar, peach or cherry, the third is plum, and the fourth is foam. The sign of fruit is not important for peach and plum. Yeah. Then the carnauba coating are made from leaf of Brazilian live tree. Sela coating are made from insect exudate. Wood rosin are extracted from pine trees. Then uh, this is my research. This is my research. I use uh, seven plants. I extracted them. Then I test for. Uh, controlling penicillium digitatum in the citrus fruit. This is the, the first table is for uh, the aim for, for the first table. I want to uh, choose which concentration that suitable for uh, control the disease. So I use uh, 500 milligram per liter. 10,000, uh, 15,000, and 10,000 milligram per liter. And in this, in this part, I got that Eugenia cariopilata is the best uh, treatment for controlling uh, penicillium digitatum disease. So in the, in the figure one, in the lower, in the, in the below than table, table one, I test the Eugenia cariopilata and also uh, Candida utilis and also control, so I, I don't put anything. So in this uh, figure, we can show that the treatment uh, Eugenia cariopilata is the best and also in the Candida utilis the best as well. And this part, in this part, I also mix the Eugenia cariopilata with the some uh, candida. I use uh, candida utilis and also candida tropicalis to control the penicillium digitatum disease and the best treatment for plant is uh, in the right one. I test the Eugenia caropilata and also Candida. You, you see that uh, we have got CYP, that means uh, Eugenia caropilata with uh, yeast, Candida utilis, and also P means uh, Penicillium digitatum. If we, if we apply 
Candida Eugenia in the Penicillium digitatum, we, we can see that the, the colonization of Penicillium digitatum lowers than other. And then, if we, uh, how about the Candida colonization? In the Candida colonization, uh, CYP is the, in the middle. So that means Candida still can alive, even though mixed with uh, Eugenia cariopilata. The market wants the produce of our product is excellent quality. No wound, no or minimal pesticide residue in the product. But this is heavy in the modern agriculture. Not to use the synthetic agrochemical. But we should to reduce the use of pesticide attention in the currently focus on alternative control strategies based on improved cultural practices, biological control, and plant defense promoter. So that's why we pursue to use biological control and physical method to reduce pesticide use. So we move to talk about biological control. In this part, I would like to explain you the isolation and selection antagonists, then antagonists for disease control, mode of action of antagonists, antagonist mixture to improve disease control, and combined treatment to improve disease control. And the biocontrol, bio usually we have three uh, mode of action, there are competition, antibiosis, and parasitism. Development is driven by safety concern. The activity from laboratory experiment is difficult to transfer to the a commercial scale. This is the problem after now. And then no activity again existing infection. Infection that occur at harvest and then efficacy is generally inconsistent and never complete. Previously, we already registered a product named Aspire and Biosafe, used for uh, the content of Pseudomonas syringae, and still used up to now, and then Aspire used Candida oleopila. This is the, the name of Biosafe 10 LP, and this biocontrol is registered for post service use. Then, this is the spectrum of activity of biocontrol of for post harvest decay control. Uh, usually, use bacteria, for example, use Pseudomonas syringae, and for controlling decay in the crop of apple, pear, citrus, and sweet cherry and use yeast, especially for candida oleopila, for control the penicillium decay on palm fruit and citrus. This is the biocontrol resistance in other countries. For example, yeast plus contain cryptococcus albidus in the South Africa for palm fruit, and then evocrine inside uh, this product is bacillus subtilis, developed in South Africa for avocado, shimmer developed in Israel for apricot, peach, citrus, grapes, pepper, strawberry, and sweet potato, several other products such as candy fruit using a candida sake, Nexi using candida oleophila, and bony protect using aerobasidium polulan still developed. Uh, the post harvest treatment approved for organic produce and their limitation. Usually we use sodium bicarbonate, but still short life. And if we use calcium chloride and other chlorine product, only water and surface disinfectant. If we use UV irradiation, it's high cost. 
damaging to some crop. And if we use biocontrol agent, it's inconsistent and inefficiency. It's difficult to uh, use the organic in the organic product. But this is the prevention, suspension, suppression, and eradication of post-service decay. Compare fungicide and the biological control. If we use fungicide, uh, only single synthetic active ingredient. But if we use biological control, we mix of active and inactive ingredient, active ingredient often unknown. And if we use fungicide, well characterized chemically and toxicologically. But if we use biological control, chemically and toxico toxicologically often poorly characterized, but consider natural. Consider natural is important. Fungicide, if we use efficacy generally high, and if we use biological control, the efficacy is variable. This is the lack of uh, using biological control up to now. But uh, if we use uh, biological control, especially for antagonist, antagonist microorganism, this antagonist uh, must have several characteristic. For example, this microorganism should genetically stable, should effective at low concentration, should effective against a wide range of pathogen species, should effective on various host species. Need uh, simple nutrition, nutrition, nutritional requirement able to grow in cheap substrate, able to grow formulated with a long shelf life, easy to apply it and distribute it, resistant to pesticide use in field and during storage, compatible with other chemical and physical treatments, compatible with commercial processing procedure, able to survive in adverse environmental condition, not pathogenic for the host plant, not toxic for a human, and not able to grow at 37 degrees Celsius. It's quite hard to get this antagonist uh, microorganism that have all the characteristic. Uh, this is the example using uh, yeast or fungal species for pathogen control. The first is yeast, the name of yeast of fungal species. The second is the what pathogen can control by yeast or fungal species. And the third column is uh, the, the host of this pathogen. For example, uh, the yeast arrow basidium pululans can control uh, botatis cinerea, molinia, uh, Rhizopus stolinifer, the host of this pathogen is uh, R apple, grapes, peach, strawberry, and sweet cherry, and other example. Please uh, read by yourself. Then, uh, how to isolate the antagonists that have several main characteristics? If we want to get the good antagonist, we should search for antagonists in the healthy fruit, in the orchard, or in the storage. Especially for fruit that unmanaged or organic orchard. So no fungicide or no chemical can uh, suffer to the uh, microorganism. Then isolate naturally occurring microorganism from fruit and vegetable just before harvesting or during storage. Then how to select? We, we select that microorganism have fast grower, exhibit protective rather than curative activity, 
appear to have little effect on latent infection. After this, we should uh, after isolation and uh, isolation and the screening process. We should have a secondary screening. Usually, this step we we call a discovery. The screening should be in the semi-commercial trial. Should be in the preliminary toxicology. Is it the pathogen have uh, are or release toxic toxin or not? Then our, and in the in the production or how the mode of action of uh, antagonists. After this process, uh, we we go to the commercial development. We try to to produce in the commercial way. We 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 cut the formulation, and if no toxic, so we can reduce this. Uh, Biological control agent for uh, formulate the fungicide in the post harvest treatment. This is my research of using uh, Eugenia cariopila and the Canida utilis. In this figure, uh, in the A, as I only use Eugenia cariopila. A. And B, B, I use imazelil as kind of fungicide uh, in the concentration of 150 milligram per liter. C as a uh, water, C as water. D as I use ethanol 20%. And the right side, and the right side. It's the same uh, same treatment, but this is for disease severity counting. We can see that in the left side, in the disease uh, incidence, the Eugenia cariopila and yeast combination with yeast candida utilis is the best uh, treatment for controlling the penicillium digitatum. Similar with disease severity as well, the combination of uh, Eugenia cariopilata and also uh, yeast candida utilis, the disease severity lower than other. And when I compare with the imazelil in the several concentration, the combination of Eugenia cariopilata and candida utilis still the best treatment for controlling the penicillium digitatum. In this part, we can assume that Eugenia cariopilata and Canida utilis can replace the imazelil fungicide. This is the good news for my research. So we can reduce the uh, using of uh, fungicide in the post harvest treatment. In this part, I would like to show you that my my research using uh, Eugenia cariopilata extract on PDA and also I put penicillium digitatum like a circle and then for line is a candida utilis. This is for seven days, uh, seven days uh, incubation. In the middle, in the B, we saw that uh, the penicillium digitatum still have spore. But after I observed under the fluorescent microscope, the penicillium digitatum is not alive. Compared with the, the below one, the below one is the control. So penicillium digitatum under the microscope and the the right one is under the fluorescent microscope. The the life penicillium digitatum show in the glow. So so the yellow yellow one. 
this is uh, why why the why the penisian digitum cannot live in the penis Eugenia uh, caryopilata and also under pen, you, candida utilis treatment because the if I if I grow the penisian digitum in the pure can can pure Eugenia caryopilata so Penisium digitatum cannot alive. So this I grow the penisium digitatum only I put two percent of uh, Eugenia coriopilata, and I put the edge of the colony and in the middle, in the middle, in, and I observe under the microscope. Then we saw that uh, have a sporangiophore also have conidia as well. Then in the right part, I observed under the fluorescent microscope, we can show in the circle that the, the circle one cannot show the yellow glowing. That means the part of this is cannot connect from the main body to the, to the other body. We can see in the E part, in the E part, we saw that some part is not connected. In the arrow, in the arrow, pay attention for this. And when I observe this part under the fluorescent microscope, also the, this part cannot show the yellow glowing. That means uh, the, can the Eugenia caryopilata and also Candida utilis can make lysis for the uh, high fee of penicillium digitatum. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much uh, for your explanation, Ms. Henny Skorini, PhD. We hope that explanation give advantage for our students. And thank you for all the presenters. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we are we come to the opinion, question, and se answer session. We have ten minutes for this session. This session is uh, for three questions. Your question can write in chat column, in English or Indonesian language, or you can ask a question directly. Turn on your camera. Uh, open your mic and don't forget to mention your name. Uh, okay, uh, you can raise hand button in Zoom. Uh, okay, any question? Maybe. Okay, maybe uh, I want to ask uh, before. Uh, according to observation in general, the quality of agriculture product in Thailand uh, better than Indonesia. Uh, what do you think uh, this happened? And what are the dominant factor? Uh, it, that uh, one question. And the second question maybe are there the different treatment that are overdone in Thailand but have been done in Indonesia? The question is for... Three? Three question. No, I mean the, the question is for her or for uh, me? For Assistant Professor Dr. Nit Napis Kwekhom. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, could, could you repeat it again, the question? Yeah, for, uh, for the first question, according to our uh, observation, in the general quality of agriculture product in Thailand better than Indonesia, what do you think this happened? And what are the dominant factors to uh, agriculture product in Thailand better than Indonesia? Uh, I think uh, 
the product in Thailand, they are divided in, into group, the big group, like for local market and also for export market. For local market, we consume, uh, I think, in, in, uh, in the same uh, grade as that. Uh, or how can I say? It's, it, it's a less standard compared with for the export market. For export market, they have a, a regulation to control and also uh, they have uh, some uh, company which uh, have uh, add some knowledge and technology to uh, treat the pr uh, produce, make a prolonged shelf life. For example, they, they use uh, the post harvest technology to induce uh, uh, to delay the senescence, to induce the host resistance, and also uh, to to use uh, uh, physical. I'm sorry, uh, to physical control, chemical control, uh, apply to the fruit. But for the local market, it's it's uh, it's can sell in the fresh market in the fresh market the shelf life or the the quality of of the fruit and vegetable uh shorter or lower than uh than the other uh market and i think uh because of thailand is a agriculture uh uh country so we we have experienced a lot about uh, manage the the fruit and vegetable, um, and I think uh, because of uh, we have a uh, good transportation to to make uh, a shorter uh, how can I say to to make uh, a shorter time to transport to other places. It's a benefit for for uh, taking care of the fruit as well, and um, I think we are we are the same in Indonesia and Thailand. We have the same uh, uh, climate and nearly the same, and also we have uh, we we facing the same group of uh, post harvest disease, and um, I think uh, yeah, but but but. Um, I think we, we have uh, many projects, for the example, the, uh, the Royal Project, the King Royal Project, that they give a fund for study in post harvest technology. I don't know that I, I answer you or not, but I, I would like to, to share that uh, uh, I think we, we, have the, the, uh, we have the same um, experience to taking care of the fruit and I, I don't think that in indonesia and thailand are different but i think we we can uh uh research together yeah okay thank you achan uh okay for miss henny may yeah. uh what do you think about this happen uh make a better product agriculture in Indonesia uh, what a factor to make a good quality to uh, product agriculture in Indonesia okay thank you for the question Achan A Achan A uh, my dean want to say something to you oh sawadika Achan. Hello, Achan A. How are you today? I'm waiting for. Ah, I, I am. I'm waiting for your coming here. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to to give a lecture today with with uh, your university. Yeah, I want to ask you. I want to ask you. How about your country for agriculture? For uh, to about. To, to available the rice because your country uh, still uh, usually still export to Indonesia but now in mm -hmm. pandemic corona 
about the place mm-hmm. your country. There is still export or stop export? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still export. I think uh, uh, the 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 situation of the corona virus, it's uh, it's not effect for the commodity transportation. It's just only a short a short period. I think in about uh, March, April, something in this year. But later on, for the transportation. I think it is not that in in effect, uh, I'm sorry it's not affect much to the uh, the producer the rice producer they are still export uh, I think I think all over the world the the effect of coronavirus is uh, affect very much on the uh, travel uh, travel system or travel uh, company much more than agriculture uh, uh, system. I think, is it, is it the same in Indonesia? No, in Indonesia uh, today is, is crisis in rice because to, uh, to reason, the firstly because the corona, almost the farmer in Indonesia, uh, uh, the, the corona affected for the farmer in Indonesia to produce the rice. And the second one, maybe uh, in in this month will be called, uh, La Nina, La Nina mm-hmm. season, and uh, to make uh, the flood, the flood and erosion. There is the reason why in Indonesia, uh, a front up to crisis for the rice, because uh, before the Corona, Indonesia still import uh, for a rice. For 4.4 million ton in a year. Mm-hmm. There is the reason why I want to ask you this uh, cooperation, not just only, not just only uh, all the gas lecture, but uh, I ask you to to collab- to our uh, to high level for our collaboration, maybe in. Together, our collaboration in research in Indonesia agriculture maybe is very, very important for you. And I, I offer, yeah, yeah, offer I you. Yeah. And, and I think at, at the first of the situation, it's effect on the uh, durian fruit because we cannot export to, to China. But for rice, the, the harvest time is at the end of the year, which is the Corona virus. It's, uh, it's not... Um, the big problem like before. So it's, 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 uh, it seems to be better and better. Yeah, and I I'm, I'm agree that uh, we, we should uh, do some uh, research to, to solve uh, a many problem which happened in, 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 the, in this uh, situation together. Okay, okay, thank you, uh, Acha. Acha. Achan, Achan, Achan. Kapun Kap Achan. Kapun Kap Achan. Kapun Kap Achan. Kapun Achan. Oh, okay. Thank you. I hope soon uh, the corona is stop, and I want yeah, to go yeah. to your uh, campus also. I, I want to bring the student for acting. Well, in it, what is the kind of magang, yeah? Internship, yeah. Internship. 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 In, uh, okay. Like uh, the last, the last year. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Say to, yeah. Say to your dean, and I'm very, very thank you for your attending here, and I am sorry, I can. Uh, apa mana 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 itu? A company. A uh, company you uh, uh, as long as time because I have so many activity today. And goodbye, and I'm waiting for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Kapun ka. Kapun ka also. So we have time? Yeah. One more question. Uh-huh. How about to make better to yeah. choose uh, in Indonesia? Yes. I think uh, for technology, for technology, Indonesia and Thailand is same. same. Uh,
kurang dekat. Okay, I'm sorry. So for technology, I think Indonesia and Thailand are same. Uh, but for awareness of uh, good quality product. Good quality product. Yeah, I think the farmer should learn from Thailand. Ah. In Thailand, the farmer aware about if even though if even they want to to sell the produce in the market, the farmer aware upon the good quality. So if if they don't get good quality, they don't sell to the to the to the to the to the market. Yes. Maybe for consume by themselves. Ah. Yeah. I think that is the problem for our country. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we are come the last agenda. Uh, we would like to, to say thanks again for two guest lecture, uh, all of the student and for active participant. Uh, the conclusion of presentation today in post-harvest disease cause uh, considerable loss to harvested fruit and vegetables during transportation and storage. Physical, biological, and chemical control uh, are primarily used to control post-harvest decay loss. Uh, but to control post-harvest disease uh, can use many control ways like physical, biological, chemical, and integrated control, uh, which, which is a way to be applied preventive and curative post-harvest disease management. Hopefully, the presentation will be give benefit for us. And before closing, we take a picture together. Uh, please turn on your camera uh, for all participants. Okay. Kop uh, Kunkhap Achan, thank you for your attention. See you later. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Dani. You are welcome.